Well, we've tested them on road and under tow. Now it's time to take the new Toyota Land Cruiser 300 series and the Y62 Nissan Patrol away from the beaten track. As ever, this comparison test is about fang-dangled tech and clever electronics in the 300 series versus a patrol package that is both proven and far more affordable. Let's see which is best. It was a fairly decisive victory for the new Land Cruiser the last time we pitched it against the Patrol. This time, however, we're putting the VX Grade 300 Series against the TIL Y62 Patrol off-road. Just like before, there is a hefty price difference to the tune of nearly $20,000. Seven seats, acres of interior space, heated and ventilated front chairs, and plenty of chrome are shared across both models, lending each a luxury theme together with some serious off-road pretensions. Both are underpinned by a ladder frame chassis and get a full-time four-wheel drive system with a low-range transfer case, plus a different suite of off-roading modes. Even with those similarities though, there are some contrasting themes between LC300 and Y62 Patrol. The biggest of them is probably diesel versus petrol, as well as that $20,000 difference in price. The Land Cruiser claims an 8.9 litre per 100k fuel consumption average versus 14.4 litres for the Patrol. The Nissan does get a larger 140 litre tank compared to the Toyota's 110 litre capacity, meaning comparable range on paper at least. Each vehicle runs 265 millimetre wide Bridgestone Jeweler 18 inch rubber in this comparison, while in the all important angle argument, it's a clear victory for the Land Cruiser in terms of approach angle, due in large part to the protruding lower bumper on the TIL Patrol variant. The Patrol wins back points for departure angle and on paper scores an apparent victory for ground clearance, but it's a closer contest in reality than the numbers suggest. Underneath, the Land Cruiser VX employs double wishbone front and four-link rigid rear suspension. The Patrol gets double wishbone coil springs all round, paired with a hydraulic suspension system that works with adaptive dampers to tailor the ride depending on conditions. Toyota made the well-publicised move to twin-turbo diesel V6 power for the latest generation of Land Cruiser. And you'd have to argue, at least on-road, it has been a hugely successful one. More power, more torque, and a much faster thinking 10-speed automatic transmission. Over in the Nissan's corner, it persists with a 5.6-litre naturally aspirated V8 that makes more power than the Land Cruiser on paper, but less torque. But anyway, enough torque, let's see how they go off-road. There are a lot of redeeming features to the Nissan Patrol TIL, aside from its purchase price. It's got that big, lumbering, torquey V8 engine, a really comfy cabin, and a really strong skill set off-road. It probably doesn't have that same level of wow factor or refinement as the Toyota Land Cruiser 300 series, but the important thing is that it will, more likely than not, get you to the other end of the trail, and that's the most important feature here. The Patrol's larger proportions and heavier curb mass are particularly pronounced through tighter scenarios on test. It simply isn't as easy to navigate around obstacles as the smaller, nippier and more camera-centric Land Cruiser. That said, the Patrol's lower crawl ratio makes descents predictable, while its superior metal underbody cladding appears to offer better protection over gnarlier obstacles. When the going gets tough, you do feel the sheer size of the Patrol. It is a physically bigger vehicle than the Land Cruiser, but the steering also requires more input. There's a larger turning circle, and there's more feedback coming through the steering wheel, the seat of your pants, the chassis, everything else. So there's a little bit more going on inside the cabin and probably requires a little bit more driver attention. With all that said, the V8, although it doesn't hit its peak torque strap till a little bit higher in the rev count offers ample torque from down low. It's quiet, it's refined, it's nicely modulated through the pedal and all the electronics and everything else do the job and work quite well. There's definitely been more instances in the patrol where we've had to engage the rear diff lock to get it out of a trickier situation. That's particularly pronounced where there's a wheel cocked in the air or tighter angles. 
that the electronics just haven't been enough on their own to help the vehicle claw its way out. That said, when you do engage the rear diff lock, happy days. It's got itself out of everything we've thrown at it this week and has certainly worked really well. On higher speed country roads, the patrol feels quite confident and it will move around quite happily on the road without any huge traction control interventions. When you look at this from a value perspective, there are a lot of likeable features with the Nissan Patrol. If you're happy to forego some of the niceties inside the cabin, some of the modern conveniences like a digital speedo, like Apple CarPlay, the truth is that it is still a really competent off-roader and it has knocked over everything we've thrown at it in the past couple of days. Toyota has made a big deal out of the fact the new 300 series underwent a really extensive testing and development program right here in Australia. And I have to say, without sounding like I've drunk the Kool-Aid, it certainly feels that way in the skin. This is a really polished off-roader and it just manages to do the one percenters that little bit better than the Patrol. It means that it feels like a better rounded package overall and a vehicle that is also more comfortable when the going gets rough as well. This VX model doesn't have the trick kinetic suspension that the GR Sport grade gets, so for that reason it's not quite as well controlled over bumps and there is a bit more heaving, pitching um, and lean as well through corners, but in every other respect it just seems to mould itself around imperfections really nicely. The engine feels more refined in this company and I have to say it just feels more manageable as well. There's less steering input required, the turning circle feels much smaller and the electronics are superb. They work really well. On test, the Land Cruiser features a distinct fuel efficiency advantage against the thirsty V8 Patrol, even if it comfortably exceeds Toyota's claim. It means a theoretically longer driving range despite a smaller fuel capacity. Another massive win goes to the LC300 when it comes to wheel articulation. The Patrol simply cannot match the travel and droop of the Land Cruiser. Now the Patrol might have a bigger advertised ground clearance than the Land Cruiser, but we've actually found in reality that this car really excels with its approach angle. You come up to a, a steep verge or a, an obstacle in the road and it just seems to have a little bit more of a buffer there, meaning you can get over things without having to worry about scrubbing out the front or underneath. The electronics as well, I found that there are less occasions where you need to engage the centre diff with the Land Cruiser because the electronics are so fast thinking, there's not as much pulsing, there's not as much going on, and the system itself is quite quiet in comparison to the Patrol. It just seems to get the job done really effectively. Those traits are augmented by nifty functions, including a multi-terrain monitor, which depicts what's going on immediately underneath the car between a pair of virtual front wheels. There's also a speed adjustable crawl control system and a feature which shortens the turning circle by locking the inside rear wheel. Those features, plus less reliance on its locking differential, conspire to give the LC300 a clear edge in tricky scenarios. We're already big fans of this new 3.3 litre twin turbo V6 diesel engine on the road. Uh, it's really refined offers supreme torque from down low in the rev range and works really well with that new 10-speed automatic gearbox. Off-road, it does everything right as well. There's that same immediacy in the power curve, so if you come to an obstacle and you just need that initial bit of grunt, it has that in spades. Enough power to get you up and over most obstacles and about the only blight on the 300 series experience for this particular vehicle is a bit of a knock in the front uh, right side of the vehicle. So I think that's probably more a reflection of the life that this vehicle has had, 6,000 Ks on the clock. God knows what it's been through uh, before this point as a press car. Some later research reveals the knock isn't isolated to our test vehicle and is currently being investigated by Toyota Australia. On the road, the Land Cruiser is subject to its share of body movement through turns and under braking, struggling to match the finesse of higher grade models fitted with Toyota's excellent kinetic suspension technology. It's another nod to the Toyota when it comes to safety. 10 airbags versus six, a more flexible autonomous emergency braking system, 
and the addition of trailer sway control just a few of the differentiators. The Toyota wins valuable points where servicing is concerned as well, almost $1,000 cheaper over three years. Disappointingly, both vehicles are subject to short six-month, 10,000 kilometre intervals. A five-year unlimited kilometre warranty applies to both. On value alone, the Nissan Patrol wins some key points in this comparison because, let's face it, $20,000 is a lot of money in anyone's language. But in terms of strictly off-roading, the win has to go to the new Toyota Land Cruiser 300 series. It's the comfier of the two, it has smarter electronics, and the new diesel engine is simply a peach.